Welcome to Paranormal, the new normal. I know it's been a while, right? I'm your host, Jeremy, as always, in case you forgot. It's been it's been a week. But we are here once again to do another special, another one-on-one bracket. When are these gonna get released? I don't know. This is been, this is gonna be a third one in the bank. So I'm gonna start releasing them soon, but I gotta figure out when and how and all that good stuff. So I have I have plans, but we'll see. It'll be soon. But anyway, we are here to do an urban the urban legends bracket again tonight for the first time since the original one and to join me on this i am he's back to do a second bracket on this show it's casey fox from an evening at the movies literature reapers and a member of i not make these rankings network how you doing tonight casey um i literally just got off work i just walked in the door and i just got online and i'm Ready to get into some urban legends and talk about all the chicanery that comes along with all that craziness. Well, I'm 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 glad to hear it because that's what we're going to be doing here tonight. And just so folks know how this works, if they haven't seen one of these before, basically each matchup, chances get Casey. Wow, <laughs> Casey is given a choice between two different urban legends, and he used to pick. Whichever one he wants, for whatever reason he wants, there's no, you're, there's no stipulations here. You have to vote for any specific reason because I really don't know what you what you would vote over on Urban Legends to begin with. What criteria you're going to go by, I can imagine. So I think it's just which one interests you more personally. But that's me. But let's get this started. I think because the first matchup is the Bell Witch versus Homie the Clown. And for those who don't know, uh, Homie the Clown, Homie the Clown is the urban legend of a killer that's dressed in clown makeup that haunt uh, stalking the Detroit urban areas. And it's it was during the clown craze, I think, in that late '80s, early '90s. And the Bell Witch is a famous witch story about about a, and uh, supposedly you can still go to the Bell Witch uh, cave, but. And it, supposedly it's still haunted from what I've heard, but I haven't been there, so I can't verify. So so my thought is, like, the whole clown craze bullshit kind of sort of pissed me off, especially, like, the stuff recently around the time that the It remake came out because it's, like, it gives the good movies bad fucking publicity all over stupid shit um which stuff is crazy weird um i'm gonna go with bell witch all right i don't blame you though i will say homie the clown is the original like clown craze not the 2016 bullshit one that happened but we'll get to that later Possibly, yes. <laughs> oh, we'll be getting to it yesterday, I'm sure. But, um, but that's going to bring us down to see who the Bell Witch will face. And it's the Dark Watchers. Interesting, actually. And it's going versus Haunchyville, which those Dark Watchers are mysterious shadow beings that are very tall in the woods of California. And it's going against Haunchyville, which was a town of carnies and little people, basically. That supposedly is pretty hard. Yeah. My bird. So while I was reading up about some of this stuff, I read about like the Dark Watchers. The way they were kind of sort of described to me, I kind of imagined is like, a reverse dark tower thing where like the gunslinger fled across the desert and the dark man followed because they're all like <laughs> the hats and walking sticks and all that happy horse crap and little people living out in the middle of the freaking woods that if people trespass in their area that cut people off at the knees and make them live their life at their height that's just really, really freaking weird to me. 
I'm gonna stick with my reverse gunslinger and go with the Dark Watchers. Yeah, I was actually gonna say the Dark Watchers are kind of semi close to you too, but and it's just a, the fact that the oh, yeah. explorers, the, the fact, the fact that the explorers in the 1500s talked about the Dark Watchers is creepy as hell. Like if they've been around that long and they're still a thing, yeah. like that's just kind of scary in a way. But all right. So that means the bell. Those are some of the greatest waters. urban legends, though. Exactly. Yeah, the ones that don't go away with time or get forgotten. About. Yeah, the ones that have been around for four or five hundred years. But that means Bell Witch will face Dark Watchers in the second round here, and that means the next matchup is going to be the Night Marchers versus the Seven Gates of Hell. Which the night markers are a Hawaiian urban legend about the kings of old and their soldiers who search the woods for people who shouldn't be there or people who disrespect the land by taking rocks and whatnot. And the seven gates of hell, if I'm not mistaken, is uh, yeah, it, it, it regards locations in York County, Pennsylvania, and it's just supposed to be locations that you can get to hell through, which supposedly they exist all over the world, yeah, but. That's just a very local urban legend of Pennsylvania. Kind of a supernatural twist to it. <laughs> uh, I would imagine that, and I have no idea, truthfully, because I'm not really big into freaking religion, but almost every religion would have their own fashion of the seven gates of hell. Oh, yeah. Or one wow. gate to hell or whatever. Um Yeah, we'll go with the Seven Gates of Hell just because it seems like something that definitely could be a lot more prevalent in real everyday life. Yeah, I mean the night marchers only bother if you go bother you if you go to Hawaii and do things you shouldn't do, which that's a that's a less, that's a definitely a minority of people compared to the Seven Gates of Hell. But and yeah, I'm I'm never gonna make enough money to fly across the ocean. I hope I hope I do someday, but we'll see. Um, that's a dream always since the Brave Bunch, since I saw the Brave Bunch go there. But um, the next matchup to see what will face Seven Gates of Hell is going to be Bloody Mary, which everybody knows what that is, versus the Bunny Man, which is basically just a guy in a bunny costume that would either chase kids at lovers' lanes or chase you if you stopped your car on a bridge, or there's multiple versions of that legend, but. Basically, a man of bunnies who's trying to kill you. Good so, basically, like the whole Bloody Mary idea, you kind of sort of... There's multiple different aspects of that urban legend that's been out. I mean, Candyman, Bloody Mary, whatever. I mean, even to a certain extent, even like the whole Beetlejuice idea is kind of sort of along the same lines. Say his name three times and he appears. Bloody Mary, you say their name three times, five times looking in the mirror and they appear behind you. All the time. Um, what I read about the freaking bunny man was like somebody in a bunny costume with an axe or a chainsaw chasing people around. I mean, that shit's like Easter Bunny Texas Chainsaw Massacre bullshit. Um, Chance he would approve yeah. that correlation. Well, well, <laughs> yes, he would. And by that standard, we will honor the birthday boy in the first round and go with Bunny Man. All right. And, and yeah, I mean, the Bloody Mary legend is a little bit better anyway. Uh, I went to actually Biggie Smalls instead of Bloody Mary. Biggie Smalls. <laughs> South Park reference. For exactly. <laughs> But it's going to be Seven Gates of Hell versus Bunny Man in the second round. And that's going to bring us to our next matchup, which I love this matchup. I really do. It's Melon Heads versus Black Eyed Children. And which, for those who don't know, Melon Heads. Yeah, Black Eyed Children. Yeah, Melon Heads are the. 
are people who have head shaped like melons, very simply. And there's rumors of rural communities of them, and there's and I've heard stories on other podcasts of people seeing them all driving when they were kids in cars when they were kids and stuff. They look over and see one driving a car. Like it's just it's it's been around, and everybody knows what black eyed kids are. If you don't look it up, goddamn, where you been? <laughs> I mean, it's basically freaking children possessed by demons or Satan or however you want to classify it. And it's portrayed with literally kid, kids with black freaking pupils. Well, actually, I mean. Creepy as hell. It's like children, some children of the corn bullshit. It's, it's at, well, actually, that's the thing is nobody knows where they come from. Like, like I've heard some people. Like I, I hypothesize the devil thing, but we don't know where they come from. And it's also the fact that there now is legends of white eyed kids controlling them. Yeah, you know I mean, way too. Yeah. That's a little bit creepy. So we'll go ahead and go with the creepy and go with the black eyed children. You're gonna go with the black eyed children. <laughs> All right. It's also one of my favorite Boondock songs. <laughs> but All right. And ooh, I love this matchup. This next matchup I love too because it actually was perfect. And this because these are all randomly generated matchups, folks. Um, they're all randomly generated matchups, so none of these are ranked, and none of them are to go for any specific reason other than that's just the way it happened. But this next matchup is kind of a music urban legend matchup because it's Paul is dead versus Robert Johnson. Hmm. So Paul is dead is the Supposedly, Paul McCartney's been dead since, like, back in the early to mid-60s. And Yeah, supposedly if you play one of the Beatles records the Beatles, backwards, it's their management. Paul's dead. Yeah, and their management and all of that orchestrated basically an imposter to take his place, and the imposter is the one still going around obviously because Paul will be dead, portraying himself as being Paul McCartney. And, um, I don't remember the other one right off the top of my Ro head. Robert um, Johnson Robert Johnson is the blues player who supposedly sold his soul to the devil in order to be able to play good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. This was kind of sort of like the premise of, I think, the Ralph Macchio movie from back in the 80s crossroads where yeah basically you meet the devil at the crossroads and you sell your soul for lack of a better term a fiddle of, you bet your soul for you know a fiddle of gold against your soul to think i'm better than you you know the devil went down to georgia that whole concept and and robert johnson actually disappeared and no one know no one knew what happened to him to this day no one knows what happened to him so um, the whole Paul, Paul is dead thing is just annoying as shit to me. Um, we'll go with uh, Robert Johnson because that's an interesting actual story. And then the fact that he actually legitimately ended up missing and nobody has seen him makes it even that much more complex. And oh, more I mean, twisted as shit. I mean, yeah. I mean, it was so long ago too that he'd be dead by now, probably. So, if uh, who knows? But oh, yeah. that means black eyes. That means black eyed children will talk. Will face Robert Johnson in the second round. But and speaking of what I said we were talking about earlier, the next matchup is the twenty seven club versus the twenty sixteen clown sightings. And for those who don't know, the, for those who don't know, the twenty seven club is. Or legend that celebrities, a lot of celebrities have died when they hit 27. I don't have a list in front of me, but I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, 
No, there. Yeah, I mean, we've all at some point heard the whole rumor of uh, the first one that jumps out to mine for me was Kurt Cobain, just because of the fact right. that he grew up in my hometown. But I think Jimi Hendrix is in there. Um, Sid Vicious, I believe, also as well. There, there's a list of iconic musicians that all fall under that category and probably other celebrities as well but yeah um what was the other one the all the 2016 clowns yeah which were yeah. the massive Again, clown sightings in 2016 right when trump was running for president <laughs> no comment um and then american horror story did a really good job open. portraying it all <laughs> yeah no no it I actually really enjoyed that season of American Horror Story. It, it took me a couple episodes to get into it, but I enjoyed it by the end of it. Yeah. And plus, it, it's my fa- it's, it's, it was it's my slow in the beginning. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it, it was slow to get started, but once it started picking up, it got twisted really freaking quick. Yeah, and it, it has my uh, um, favorite favorite homosexual actor, and I can't think of his freaking name for anything in the world right now. He likes to oh Billy something. He likes to yell a lot, but uh, he he was in it. He was, it was the first season he was in. I loved him as an actor. The only thing I had to say about that season that was bad was how are you gonna do a season about clowns and not mention ICP when you're in freaking Michigan? Come on. <laughs> I mean, that, that would make perfect sense, but. Um, again, like I said earlier, the whole creepy clown fiasco, especially at this time, 2016, incredibly pissed me off because it gave like the it remake that came out. Well, it part one or it chapter yeah, one, part one, a lot of bad press that it didn't necessarily, yeah, so. But even knowing that it was coming a year down the road, it still got a lot of heat in the media and it didn't necessarily deserve it. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, 27 Club. Which means 27 Club will move on. But that means it's going to face, well, to find out what it's going to face, we'd have our first play-in of the, of the night. And the first playing matchup to determine who's going to go into the first round is the Highgate Vampire versus the Hookman. And for those who don't know, the Highgate Vampire, the Highgate Cemetery in London is supposed to be haunted by a creature known as the Highgate Vampire. And people have been seeing it for over 100, over 100 years at this point, reported. So it's been around for a long time. And the Hookman, everybody knows the story of the hook on the side. You hear a noise inside your car, and when you get home, you find a hook on your door. Everybody knows that story. It's been in multiple movies, and it's also was it was on Daria, my favorite rend- rend- rendition of it. But well, it, the Hook Man is basically the entire premise of I know what you did last summer. Yes, I mean even to the even to the point that they actually, when they're telling the story in the beginning around the campfire on the beach, that's. The exact story they tell is the finding oh, the hook in the door and all of that. And yeah. Um, Hookman or vampires? I've always been a bigger vampire fan, so we will push the vampires into the first round. Which means the High Gate vampire is going to face. Raymond Robinson, which for those who don't know, Raymond Robinson went by a few other aliases as well, but he was a man that was severely burned in a factory fire. And he spent the rest of his life walking up and down a highway at night to because he didn't want people to see him. And so people would see him when they were driving that highway at night and he got a reputation, the burnt man, or there's a bunch of other actual names for him I can't think of. But Basically, the premise of being the creepy recluse, the town's creepy recluse, and nobody sees him, but there's reports of people seeing him. Yeah. Weird. 
it's actually very similar to the Highgate Vampire in a way, <laughs> if you, if, when you put it that way. But yeah, no, it, it really is. Um, and I'm sorry, if there's vampires yeah, anywhere, it's London. <laughs> oh, I agree 100. percent It makes perfect. I mean, that's where. I mean, Europe in general is the one where is the place where all that vampire for folklore comes from. But I mean, London makes perfect sense. So, um, yes, it does. Well, let's put Raymond up against the vampires in the first round. Oh, well, you're, you're, no, no, no. Um, this is the first round matchup. You, the vampire went into the first round matchup. And Raymond was already. Oh, yeah, that's right. Never mind. Okay, yeah. That, I messed that up. So, well, then screw that. Then we're going to go with the freaking vampires. Sounds good to me. But that's going to conclude the first half of the first round with the 27 club facing the high gate vampire in the second round. But the other side of the first round. Is going to get started off by Zombie Road versus the 999 phone charging myth. Which Zombie Road, I forget the freaking place it is, but it's a basically a back a road somewhere, a back, a back, a back road highway where supposedly there's zombies on it. And if you drive down it, it's, I think it's like the middle of nowhere, fucking Missouri or something like that. It's somewhere out there in the Midwest, and, but. But the 999 phone charging myth is a Europe, a uh, England thing, because 999 is their emergency number, and supposedly if yeah. you call 999 to hang up, it charges your phone 100, percent like in a second. Yeah, I, I can't vote for that one, only for the pure fact that realistically, come on, people that use common sense, there's no way in hell. Supposedly, from what I read, it's like especially if your phone is down to like. 15% or something like that, and you dial 999 and hang up. 100% battery. It's like, that physically cannot happen. So... Yeah, I agree. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with The Walking Dead. I mean, Zombie Road. <laughs> I think that same joke got made in the original episode, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure, but... It... <laughs> And that means zombie road will yeah, move it, on. Don't fix it. Exactly. And the, the next matchup is an interesting one. It's the baby train, which is the idea that uh, there's this town where every every night at like two in the morning, a train would run by and blow its horn. And suppose we would wake everybody, all, all the adults up and result in them having sexual relations, of course. And because of that, this town was constantly pumping out babies. So, and yeah, supposedly, against, like you wake up and it's too late to go back to sleep, but too back. early to get up. And so, what are you going to do? You're going to lay in bed. And... Exactly. And it's going against poison candy, which, as everybody knows, is the urban legend of people poisoning Halloween candy. Yeah, I lived through the early 80s where. Poison candy was probably at its most prevalent. That shit and that craze was a real freaking, everybody was all freaking, oh no, don't, you can go out trick-or-treating by yourself, but make sure you bring every piece of your candy home before you eat it. I have to inspect it and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, me, eh, whatever. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it was the same in the 90s when I grew up, so yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, I get it to a certain Makes extent. Sense. There's crazy enough. Pe- there's crazy enough people out there even today that yeah, you probably should be careful taking candy or whatever from anybody because you don't know what the hell you're going to get. I mean, it could be drugged, poisoned, you know, sabotage with razor blades or needles or whatever. Yeah, no. Um, what was it going up against? It was poison candy versus baby train. Oh yeah, the horny people that can't go back to sleep. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
God, realistic. I could. Both of them have a fair amount of realism to them, though. I, I, mean, I live literally like a half mile away from a freaking train track, and the train comes in at all times of the night. And if you get woken up, you ain't going back to sleep for a while. So, you know, the steel line from Ghostbusters. Who are you gonna call? I mean, what you what are you gonna do? <laughs> brown chicken, brown cow. Um. So is poison is baby train moving on? I, I think I'm gonna go with poison candy though, only because I think it's the one that pretty much everybody in society today has been affected by probably the most at some point. I agree. It was the beginning of the sat satanic pa panic era in the 80s and 90s. But that means Zombie Road will yep. face Poison Candy in the second round. But this next matchup is kind of a weird one. But I kind of, you know me, I like weird stuff. So they go together. It's going to be the Crying Boy painting legend, which is about a painting that was made by a, I believe, French artist. And basically any house this painting was in, the house would burn down as, as shortly after. And so they believe the yeah. painting was haunted. And it's going against the Owl Man, which is basically the European version or the English version of um, the Mothman. The Owl Man's a flying cryptid that has been yeah. seen all over the UK. Um. Oh God! Let's go with the first one, the crime boy painting. Yeah, only because I think that's one of those urban legends that it probably has been done in a movie before, but I think it could be done in a pretty cool way to where it would make for an awesome movie. Yeah, it, it would be, but. Um, that means to find out what the crying boy painting is going to face, you have the babysitter and the man upstairs slash clown statue urban legend versus the killer in the back seat urban legend. So you got two classic urban legends against each other. Yeah, for, I those, mean, for those who don't know, the babysitter and the man upstairs basically the either the babysitter gets a call and the man says, I'm in the house, and it's been done in horror movies a bunch of times. I, don't let a stranger in, or I think it was called, but when but, a stranger and, calls, yeah, when a stranger calls, yeah. And the clown statue version of it is just a babysitter sees a clown statue in the parents' bedroom when she's babysitting, and she calls. And when the parents call, check in, she says, "That's a that's a creepy clown statue you have in, the, in your bedroom." And she and they're like, "One, why the fuck were you in our bedroom? Two, we don't have a clown statue." So, and to kill her, dressed as a clown. John Wayne Gacy style. Yeah, but, I mean, as, as a parent, if I get a phone call from a babysitter and they say something about something that's in my bedroom, that person is not getting rehired again because my bedroom should be off limits. <laughs> well, as I said, why the fuck are you in my bedroom? <laughs> but <laughs> Exactly. And number two is the class, and the other one is the classic killer in the backseat story where Someone behind you is flashing their high beams constantly when you're driving and you don't know why you think that they're the danger. But then when you finally get home, they pull them behind you and they say they're flashing their high beams because there's someone in your back seat with a knife. And every time they flash their high beams, the person ducked back down. I think it was the basis possibly. I know this one is definitely based in one or two different horror movies as well. I don't remember. I was thinking it was one of the original Urban Legend movies, but I could be wrong. I haven't seen those in so freaking long. It's ridiculous. Um, me, me, me either, but I have a bracket idea for this show that they might be in soon, so we'll see. Well, I mean, truth be told, if somebody was wanting to recommend the Urban Legend movies for an evening at the movies, I would would literally have no choice but to accept the request because we honor all requests on an evening at the movies. 
Might be um, a good October. Might be a good October episode. Definitely because I think, not to get off topic really quick, but um, Amanda and I are kicking around the idea of because the last two years for Halloween we went heavy on the slashers, mm-hmm. and where I think we might go kind of more traditional horror for this year, and mm-hmm. a little less on the slasher movie. <coughs> Um, yeah. I'm going to go with the creepy stranger in the back seat of your car. I, I don't think you can go wrong with either one of these picks, though. Both of these are contemporary classic urban legends, though. Yes, they are. And that means that Crying Boy Painting will face Killer in the back seat in the second round. But the next matchup is Soar Alligators, which is a New York City mainly, maybe some other cities, legend about alligators that p- people buy as pets, and then when they get too big, they flush them down the toilet, and they end up in the sores, and they grow up, which they actually, <laughs> on Futurama, they completely made it so that the sores are full of alligators and 3,000 because of that. But uh, it's going against Boo Hags, which are an African legend, I believe, or Indian legend, I forget. I think African legend where... I believe it was African. Yeah, it's a witch that can actually take off the top half of her body, if I'm not mistaken, or her head. And they run around with just the bottom half of their body. It's... It's a really cool urban legend. That's actually why I put it in here, but I just haven't read it in a long time. Yeah. Again, the alligators in the sewers is kind of sort of one of those classic urban legends that everybody's heard before. And, I mean, of the classic urban legends, it's probably the more ridiculous of the classics. Um, and actually, I just, I just, I just said quick Google. Boo hags are like vampires. They gain sustenance from a person's breath, though, instead of their blood. And they do that by riding their victims. They have no skin and are red. They steal victim skin and use it for as long as it holds out, wearing it as one might, might wear clothing. They move, they remove and hide the skin before going riding. And basically, they break into your home and they basically hang it, hang themselves over a sleeping victim, sucking in their breath. And basically, they leave you awake in a coma, and they keep coming back to take your breath. And there's actually an expression from this in South Carolina called, don't let the hag ride you. Which, yeah, I agree. That, with that is creepy as fuck, and I don't think I've ever heard of an idea like that for a horror movie. I think that would make an in- an interesting horror movie. There's a lot of African urban legends and folklore that would make amazing horror movies if Jordan Peele wants to get on that. <laughs> yes. Um, we'll go with uh, that was the Boo Hags, right? Yep. Boo Hags. Yeah, we'll go with the Boo. We'll go with the Boo Hags. And <laughs> I think that's a cool fucking name, Boo Hag. Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it's better than be- has- hashtag Bigfoot Terry Dick. Bigfoot Terry Dick, yes. <laughs> and that to find out what the boo hags gonna face, <coughs> it's going against Disney's Cryo Chamber, which is basically the idea that somewhere beneath Disney World in Florida, Walt Disney is frozen in a cryo chamber, or or his head is waiting to come back. When. Like, well, unlike, hopefully unlike on Family Guy, where he popped out and asked if all the Jews were gone, then popped back in when he heard they weren't. But, gotta love Family Guy's take on Disney. But, and he's going right. he's going against Goatman, though. The Goatman is a famous American cryptid that uh, the Pope Lick Bridge in Kentucky, I believe, uh, is one of the most famous cases. It's basically the idea of a satyr from ancient Greece, ancient Greece folklore. Uh, half goat, half man. And a lot of the stories in America, though, have the goat man wielding axes for some reason. So, 
I'm going to get a little bit ridiculous with my pick. And you're, well, you're say, free to do that. <laughs> well, I, I think for shits and giggles, it would be funny as hell if the Disney cryo chamber thing was true and Walt Disney did end up coming back from, from the dead and seeing exactly what his empire that he created back in the early 20th century has turned into because I don't think for any intents and purposes he would recognize what the hell his empire is now. No, no offense to, to the Star Wars and the Marvel and all of that but that is absolutely nowhere near what Mickey Mouse and Pluto and Goofy and Donald and all of that he, was. He's going to pop his head out of the chamber like, who the fuck bought Rocky Horror Picture? Who the fuck? <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, we'll, at least for a round, we'll put Disney through to the next round. Yeah. I See, I, I mean, I believe in the Goatman fully, as I've said on my other podcasts multiple times and on this podcast, I'm pretty sure. But oh, yeah. Walt Disney being frozen, I can believe that to the freaking fullest because he had money. And money can make anything happen in the long run. So, so yeah. I mean, well, I, I look at the freaking people that are trapped at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean right now because their submarine crashed. Or whatever the hell Which is, the whole story was. I don't know what. What's that? That's a conspiracy in itself right there, but. Because there, well, I mean, there might be something down there. There might be something down there they I, don't want them to find. Exactly. Well, and I mean, the, the, friggin the, 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 the Titanic, the Titanic sinking goes. Yeah. Because I believe when I was talking conspiracy theories on thirty flirty and not thriving, that was one of the ones that Vanessa brought up was the whole Titanic conspiracy. Well, of course she'd bring that up, <laughs> but um, she loves Titanic. But yeah, there is a there is a conspiracy behind why it sank, and there's multiple conspiracies about why Boats it sank. Boats and But but yeah, um, yeah. So I not to go off topic here, but I don't know. We'll we'll do a conspiracies bracket part two at some point if I can find enough to do it. But I'm sure I can. But we'll see. But the next matchup is and excuse my pronunciation on this 100% already but it's the Mananagal which is, oh this is what I was thinking of with the Buhag. It's a mythical creature of the Philippines that is able to separate its upper torso from the lower part of its body and their fangs and wings give them a vampire-like appearance and they're, they're basically giant flying bats. They're basically like man bat from uh Batman, except they could separate the bottom and top halves, and it's going against the ankle slicing car thief, which is the which is the urban legend of a car thief waiting underneath your car who will slash your ankles to cut your to cut your nerves so you'll pass out on the ground basically, and they can steal your car. <laughs> Don't know where it started, but so, it sounds r- ridiculous to me personally. Yeah, so already the one has a negative black mark. Attached to it because I can't pronounce the name. Um, <laughs> the other one, yeah, that one. Uh, the other one happens to kind of sort of have kind of sort of a reimagining from the end of the original Pet Cemetery movie when oh, true, um, I, I never thought that is hiding up, <laughs> is hiding under the bed, and he uses a scalpel and slices. Judd's the name. Achilles tendon. Yeah. And then, yeah, he collapses on the ground and Gage basically freaking surgically tortures him to death. Um, in honor of the that's, great Stephen King classic, we'll go, we'll go with that's, the that's, ankle slicer. That's the neighbor, right? Isn't that the neighbor? Yeah, the old the guy. Yeah, the, yeah, played by Herman, Herman Munster. Mun- the Herman original. Munster. And played by uh, Barney Stinson's father. John Lithgow in the second. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I can never John Lithgow. I can never think of his name. I can never think of his name for some reason. I don't know why. The bubble dumping uh, priest from Footloose. And he was also the Trinity killer in Dexter. But 
Uh, this could, this to see what ankle slicing car thief will face. It's going to bring us down to the second play in for this ma- matchup for this bracket, and it's the idea it's the vanishing hitchhiker versus a celebrity death rule three. Which the vanishing hitchhiker is basically you're driving down a highway, you see a hitchhiker on the side of the road, you stop and pick him up back in the days when it was not illegal, and you and they're in your back seat or your front seat, and all of a sudden you look over, they're talking to you, and they you look over a few minutes later and they disappear completely. Basically, the idea that they're spirits, but and everybody knows what the celebrity death rule three is. I don't need to go into that. Yeah, I don't even think I, I know what the urban legend is, but at the same time, I also truly think that bleeds outside of the celebrity world too, because I think at some point in everybody's life they can almost attribute the rule of three to some aspect of their life, and um. I mean, if you really want to be technical about it, as far as like celebrities go, you almost could definitely find some validity in that rule. So we'll go with the celebrity death rule of three. (coughs) Which means the celebrity death rule of three goes into round one to fit in the final matchup of round one to face the licked hand urban legend which is one of my favorite urban legends. I actually, co- I actually covered it in my other podcast. But the other, the licked hand is the idea of a girl's parents are out of town for a night. She's staying at home alone. She hears a noise in the house and she puts her hand down because her dog sits underneath her bed normally to like have her dog lick her hand to comfort her. And so something, her hand gets licked and she assumes it's her dog and she goes to sleep peacefully. The next morning, she wakes up and she goes into the bathroom and her dog is killed in the bathroom. And it's the sound she heard the night before was it's blood dripping off the wall and written on the wall in the dog's blood is humans can lick too. Creepy as fuck. Right. That's why I freaking love it. It's such a creepy. And that needs to be a horror movie because I'm pretty sure it's not. No, because I had never even heard that one until I started doing the research this morning. Yeah, that one's creepy as fuck. I, I covered that one in my other podcast because I freaking love that. Urban Legend. It's just such a creepy, scary idea that you think it's your dog looking you and it's freaking a human that's hanging underneath your bed that has killed your dog. Like, that's just, I mean, I mean, yeah, kill, killing a dog's bad enough, uh, needful things, but still, just. It's creepy as shit. It's creepy as shit, but it's the Lictan versus Celebrity Death Rule 3. Yeah, only because of the fact that um, until this morning I had never heard of the dog licking hand and again, not a huge fan of animal cruelty in my urban legends. So we'll go ahead and go with the celebrity rule of three deaths and move that one on to the next round. Okay. Which means that which means that round one is officially over. But that means we are going into the second round now. And at this point, I have to remind Casey that he made all these matchups, so he has no one to blame himself. <laughs> but it's gonna the first matchup I is gonna be the did belt. Make these rankings. Yes, you did. But it's gonna be the Bell Witch versus Dark Watchers. I did not do a good job at making these matchups. Um, <laughs> creepy witches or reverse dark tower. Um, yeah, reverse dark tower was fun while it lasted. Let's move the 
Bell Witch on to the next round. Means the Bell Witch does move on to the next into the quarterfinals. But what is, what is she going to face? Is it going to be the Seven Gates of Hell or the Bunny Man? Seven Gates of Hell or Texas Chainsaw Massacre Bunny? Yes. Um, only because one of my cohorts from the recent Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 episode of An Evening at the Movies I know is watching. So I'm going to honor her being my co-host and say that uh, Creepy Bunny moves on to the next round. She doesn't love Creepy Bunny. But that means the next matchup, well, that means about which will face Bunny Man in the quarterfinals. But the next matchup is Black Eyed Children versus Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson, uh, that was the meeting the devil at the crossroads. Yes. His soul and, uh, uh, yeah, let's go with that one. Which means Robert Johnson moves on. And he is going to be facing either the 27 Club or the Highgate Vampire. Um, Let's go with the 27 Club only because I think that one... Is based in a lot more reality than the Highgate Vampire. All right, and that means Robert Johnson will face 27 Club in the next round. But that brings us to the other side of round two. And it's the first matchup is going to be Zombie Road versus Poison Candy. All right, Zombie Road. I mean, zombies are fascinating horror characters to begin with, period. Um, but again, poison candy is something that has literally affected probably 85% of the population of the world in some way, shape, or form. So yes. we will move poison candy on to Which means that Poison Candy will face one of these two in the quarterfinals. And it's either the Crying Boy painting or the killer in the back seat. Um, so, since I know she's watching, I'm going to pose this question out here and hopefully she'll it back. Um, Amanda, which movie do you, can you think of that was rooted in the basis of the creepy asshole in the backseat of a car being and no I don't mean Halloween either so don't bother throwing that one in there but what movie was that one all based off of um, that's the one we're going to move on to the next round though the killer in the backseat alright yeah, that's the better choice in my opinion too but something about a painting that burns down half I mean, it's fascinating <laughs> crying Pain, yeah, that crying painting one is still creepy as hell too. But put Tom, put that do that do a movie about that and put Tom Hanks as the detective. But that means Poison I mean, Candy will face it. Kind of, sort of has a Da Vinci Code esque kind of plot to it. That's what I was going with. Yeah, but that means Poison Candy will face Killer in the back seat in the quarterfinals. But to figure out the last quarterfinal matchup, we have two more matchups in round two. And there'll be the Boo Hag versus Disney's Cryo Chamber. Yeah, okay. We're getting down to the nitty gritty here and we're getting our hands dirty. And as cute as the whole Walt Disney coming back from the dead and seeing what his Disney empire has become was all funny and all that in the first round. Yeah, the Boo Hag is a lot more 
impressive of an urban legend. So, boo hags into the third round. Yes, it is. And, yeah, I mean, those African urban legends are creepy as shit. But that me, oh, any, anywhere but America, really. Urban legends are a lot more creepier. But um, that means that boo hags are going to face either the ankle slicing car thief or the celebrity death rule of three. Gage Creed versus the celebrity rule of three death, or the celebrity death rule of three. Um, yeah, I can't do Gage Creed again. Celebrity death rule of three, kind of, sort of has some deep-seated reality rooted with it. So, we'll vote them on. Alright. And that's going to bring us to the end of the round two and into the quarterfinals. And that means the first matchup is the Bell Witch versus the Bunny Man. Which I kind of want to oh. see that wrestling matchup right there. But yeah. Literally, steel cage met to death. Uh, it, it's like that. Mo- it's like that movie I put into the masturbators horror movie bracket. Um, uh, I forget what it's called. It's a, it takes place in a graveyard, and it's basically Jimmy Hart uh, announcing like five, six different wrestling matches uh, between like horror figures. Oh, huh. interesting. Uh, so, Bell Witch and. Leatherface in a bunny suit. And actually, funny enough, one of the wrestlers in it is called Witch Bitch. <laughs> Interesting. Um, let's put Bunny Man on to the semifinals. And yes, he will be. Uh, yeah, see, in the original... We had too many Supernatural fans, so Bunny Man didn't make it out of the first round. But because Seven Gates of Hell is a Supernatural, a Gates of Hell is a Supernatural, like second, third season storyline. So, but that means to see what's going to face Bunny Man in the semifinals, you have Robert Johnson in the deal with the devil versus 27 Club, which you could actually say might be a deal with the devil too. We don't know. I mean, it very well could be. Um, God, I think either one of these is worthy to move on to the semifinals, too. Um, Let's go with selling your soul to the devil. Robert Johnson, it is. I bet a fiddle of gold again. Ha! I was right. Amanda messaged me back. The the killer in the backseat of the car is urban legend. I I figured it. They cover a lot of urban legends in those movies, but yeah, there's like three movies. I think one, two. Yeah, I think and Bloody Mary. Fine. Yeah, I only ever saw the first one. I'm pretty sure, but. But that means we're going to move to the other side of the quarterfinals now. And it's going to be the first matchup on that side is Poison Candy versus the killer in the back seat. Um, I'm going to go with killer in the back seat only because... Um, Poison candy has ruined many of Halloweens for me as a kid. And we're just going to 86 that shit off the board right fucking now. I know, right? Like, you get one of your favorite pieces of candy and you only get one of them. And then, like, oh, it's slightly open. We just throw it out. You son of a fucking bitch. Yeah. What? Exactly. <laughs> but that means killing the back seat is going to face one of these way, two. Go ahead. 
Amanda and I have officially an- are here to announce that um, coming soon on an evening at the movies, we will definitely be discussing Urban Legends. The movie, Urban Legend. Count me I brought it up and suggested it, and she said, yes, please. Well, so, count me in if you count me in if you have me because I definitely wouldn't mind giving that a rewatch. But especially right. after, especially after making it. this bracket and doing the initial research for it. But yeah. uh, the the final matchup in the quarterfinals is going to be Boo Hags versus Celebrity Death Rule Three. Oh, God. I still think, truthfully, Boo Hags would make an insanely interesting horror movie. And it would. Again, Celebrity Death Rule of Three. It is what it is. And everybody knows it. And it got its little recognition and all that. Let's cut the cord and move on. So, boo hags into the next round. Which means it is now time to go to the semifinals. There's only two matchups left before the finals. And your final four are Bunny Man, Robert Johnson, The Killer in the Back Seat, and Boo Hags. And the first matchup is going to be the Bunny Man versus Robert Johnson. Bunny Man versus Robert Jones. Um, Bunny Man. Which means the Bunny Man moves into the finals on one side. And it's either going to be facing Killer in the Back Seat or Boo Hags. God, I really don't like this matchup. I don't want to vote either one of the two of these out. Um, I think we're going to vote Killer in the back seat out and move the Boo Hags into the finals. Ooh, tough decision, but I completely respect the outcome of it. Makes you never want to visit Africa. Yeah, and the <laughs> final matchup isn't going to make it any easier either. Well, before we get to I that. I know who I have in the finals. And yeah. Yep, third place. Exactly. Yep, it's time for the third and fourth place matchup. You are right. And it's Killer in the Backseat versus Robert Johnson. So basically, killer in the back seat versus the basis for um, the devil went down to Georgia. <laughs> yes. Um, I <clears throat> nothing against killer in the back seat because. It's a classic urban legend. The whole concept of selling your soul for the purpose of achieving a lifelong dream to be a musician or whatever, famous writer, movie star, celebrity, whatever the case may be, um, has always fascinated me. Um, So... Let's go with uh, Robert Johnson. Which means Robert Johnson does win third place. But the finals are going to be the Bunny Man versus Boo Hags. And uh, take as much time as you need. On still this not thing. ready. For this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no stretches, unfortunately. I really should have put one of these in the third place game. That way, the other one would have an easier time in the final. Yeah, that ain't no fun. <laughs> no, it's not. And 
I mean, honestly, the whole, I mean, the bunny man, bunny suit, chainsaw, hatchet wielding, psycho, feels very Texas Chainsaw Massacre-esque to me, which I like. And then, again, like I said, even all the way back, every round since, all the way back to the first round, I love the idea of the boo hag story, and I think it would make an incredible freaking horror movie. Um, and Amanda knows as much as I do that I like to dream the impossible dream of being a writer someday. So we'll go with the story potential and go with Boo Hags for the win. All right. And apparently there is a Boo Hag something. Oh, it's in develop. There is a Boo Hag movie in development right now, supposedly. Well, of course, somebody stole my damn idea. And it's, it's actually just called the Boo Hag. But, but you said you wanted to move which one forward? I'm sorry, I was looking at Google. Boo, boo Hag for the win. Boo Hag's ah, for the win. There we go. And just because it's in development doesn't mean it'll actually come to fruition. Oh, God, no. There's so many movies that are in development. So that have been in development for 10, 15 years, 20 years. There are, movies, there are sequels that have been supposed to be being made for 20 years now, so wait and see. Goonies Part but 2? That's not one of them, but yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, they gave up on the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen uh, sequel and are trying, are trying to reboot it now, but which would be awesome yeah. if they cast it right. If they cast it right, it'd be amazing. But you're going to have to fucking fill Sean Connery's shoes and God help you. His final fucking movie. You better, you better do a job. Movie. No, especially when it's his final movie. But well, that means your final results here were Killer in the Backseat at fourth place, Robert Johnson at third, Bunny Man in second place, and Boo Hags in first place. Which I I I really got a copy over who won the originals of all these, so I know who won the originals. But I honestly can't remember. But seeing Boo Hags win actually makes you very happy. But I'm happy with them, the sir. results. Oh, I am too. But tell them, where can they find you and everything you do? So, An Evening at the Movies is available wherever you get your podcast listening fix. Spotify, Apple, Google, Good Pods. Um, little fun fact. Um, we currently got our daily Google or Good Pods ranking for mm. an evening at the movies and we are the number 21 movie and film review podcast out there on their app right now so yay for us um we're in the midst of finishing up our tom hanks bracket so we've got two rounds left to go so if you're interested in that come come on over and vote on that it's been a lot of fun, and actually, Jeremy was the one that recommended it. So, we've got our final four set and ready to go. Everybody has to tune in Sunday night to find out who the four are. Ha ha ha! So, it was a lot of fun being here. I am glad that I got the invite, and thank you for having me, sir. Not a problem at all. And Yes, and I'm excited for the next bracket as well that's coming up that someone suggested, and I fully back her suggestion. But because it's a bracket that needs to be done, that hopefully will be done. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that one. The one that we haven't announced yet, yes. Yep, yeah, I, I, I have the bracket actually. Just... <laughs> I have the bracket currently filled out, and it will probably be announced on Sunday's episode of an evening at the movies so another reason why to tune in and listen exactly and of course you can see casey again on maniacal music musings coming up for a one-on-one -on -one halloween songs bracket but you can also and check out all the shows he does plus you can also 
find me, as you all know, on Facebook as Paranormal the Normal slash Maniacal Music Musings Podcast with S Facebook group. I really need to make a new name for that. Uh, you can find me on at Juggalo Bastard on Twitter and the gram. And you can find me at, at Juggalo Bastard Podcast on Tiki Tuck, eh? Unless you live in uh, Wisconsin, I think it is now. God, God help you guys. And you can also find me on YouTube as Paranormal the Normal or where we stream on YouTube, the Blind Knowledge Network. But until next time, I thank you everybody for tuning in that watch, and I thank everybody that listens for listening. Like and subscribe wherever you're watching or listening. Have a good night, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow for a regular paranormal interview for the first time in a while. Until next time.